Hello and welcome. You are joining me today on Open Studio and my name is Cindy Pavasic and we will be speaking on mental health today related to HIV and AIDS. I have a very special guest and a friend of mine here today, Dorian Besson. Welcome, Dorian. Hello, Cindy. Uh, and, uh, it's very good to be here. I'm so glad. I hope that we are going to have a fabulous conversation and um, I know that the situation you have been in has been a pretty hectic one. Firstly, give us a little bit of a background of who you are and what you are about. Well, I'm Dorian Besson. I am HIV positive for the last 13 years. On the 5th of December, I'll be celebrating my 13th anniversary. Congratulations. A, yes, <laughs> I can't wait. I'm a bookkeeper by profession. But I'm also the founder of an MPO, which is very active here in, in the Western Cape, Red Ribbon Foundation. And I think over the last 13 years especially, um, I've, I've mentally challenged individuals who have approached me um, mm -hmm. because of the HIV diagnosis. I've mentally challenged them to not ov only overcome that diagnosis, but to overcome so many other social issues mm. which are related to um, one's mental well-being. Okay, what was your initial reaction on learning your HIV di diagnosis? My initial reaction, I remember, was um, I'd been working at a very um, at a building in, in Cape Town at a at a company, and the building was in Cape Town. And I went out of the room after the sister had given me the diagnosis, and I went to go sit on the stairs. And I cried myself to a stupor for probably mm. could have been two to three hours. Wow. I had just sat there crying because the next um, move that she had obviously initiated was for me to go up to Christian Bonnard for, for blood tests, mm. you know, mm. Um, mm. which is obviously necessary when you have those rapid testing. Did you, did you get any pre-counseling when you were diagnosed? <laughs> now, I'm, I'm, you know, you know, with this, Cindy, it's a bit of a story. It was the World AIDS Day, you know, the, yes. that main year that people go through yes. in December. And then I was sitting at the office, you know, and, and we had this whole World AIDS Day and program. And I thought to myself, oh, why don't I just go and, and get myself tested? Um, and it had not even crossed my mind that I would be positive. And so when I went in, um, I remember this old nurse, she was very um, elderly and, and she asked me, you know, she said about the whole pre and post counseling. And I said, well, no, 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 I know my status. No need for counseling at mm. all. And I tell you, the first test came back and they, there was that dreaded line and the second test as well. And, and I will never forget the look on her face after the third test because it, it was a death knell. I was HIV positive. And in retrospect, you would tell people, take the pre-counseling. I <laughs> would tell people, take that pre-counseling. Mm. And if I can just backtrack a bit to, to actually how, how I came about that was two years prior to my diagnosis, I had been sexually assaulted. I was walking home from university and I was dragged into the bushes. And I was sexually assaulted and the man had an, a knife to my throat and I had a what, what we term as mental or, or nervous breakdown right. on that very same evening. Right. And I was hospitalized at Lindefair Psychiatric Hospital where, you've you got to take this into context, my mom was one of the, one of the nurses at this hospital oh. and she was extremely well known. And, and so that is really where my, the word you dislike, stigma started, you right. know. Um, and, and, and so then I had the HIV diagnosis, which was all, it was rippling, you know, um, through my life. Really. Right. And you, I, I think you've told me before, you had some previous mental issues. Yes. Did this aggravate it? And what were those mental issues? Um, the, the, the mental issue that, that I just um, told you about was, was re as a result of the sexual assault. Prior to the sexual assault, I was a academic at, at, at one of the universities mm. in Cape Town and I was doing extremely well. I was actually in the top 5% of, of, of my faculty. 
and I'd received a Golden Key International Award just prior to the sexual assault. So I was perfectly normal mentally and physically mm -hmm. prior to the sexual assault. And then after being in the hospital, how did you, how did you react? How did people react as well to you having been in the hospital, being known in the, in the community as having been taken up into the hospital? Obviously, um, there were probably reasons uh, or words being said about you being assaulted. The thing with the, with the sexual assault was that I had not divulged, I had not divulged, um, you know, the details yes. to anyone because I, the shame I felt at that stage was one thing, but now there was another shame being added to it, to the fact sense. that I was being admitted to a psychiatric hospital mm. and that is the problem that we're facing in society up until today and that is why I'm so happy that, that our topic is, is mm. mental health because right. I feel that it's one of those issues or topics which is really overlooked and not, um, you know, our, our government tries so much to, to really um, promote mental wellness but yes. I don't think enough is being done. Done, okay. Yeah, I don't think and, enough is and, being and done. And where do you think you could, you could, with your HIV status, you now have a space to go and speak about it. Do you include that when you when you speak to people? It is one of the main topics. <laughs> okay. It is one of the main topics. I think, Cindy, for me, it has, has been that whole self-stigma. Yes. It was really about how I perceived myself. Did I perceive myself as someone who was mentally challenged um, because of my sexual assault, because of my HIV, or mm -hmm. just to add to the dynamics, because of the fact that I was homosexual. All three of those are dynamic topics. Wow. And, yes. and, and so, Murphy's Law, I had all three of those okay. to deal with. We, we'll come back to that in a minute. We're just going to take an ad break. That's a lot of information. Take an ad break. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back. And you are with Cindy Pavasic on Open Studio, and I'm speaking to Dorianne Besson. Just before the break, Dorianne, we were talking about you had three whammies. Get a little bit more into that because I know there was there was actually even more to it. Um, elaborate on that a little bit. So, if I can just um, elaborate, is that you know I have homosexuality, which in itself you know, was something to deal with. It, it was then I had the sexual assault which happened. Um, and I used the homosexuality to, to cover up the sexual <laughs> assault. Mm. And, and that was a perfect mm. cover up. Yeah. So they were treating me at Lindhya Psychiatric Hospital because of the fact that I couldn't deal with my homosexuality. So they helped uh -huh. me come to terms with um, my sexuality, you know, it was all about teaching me how to be assertive, how to stand up for myself, how to, um, you know, increase my self-esteem. Um, so I was being treated for that. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, I had the sexual assault which ever happened, which they were not even looking at because they were not aware of mm. it. But in a way, it was a blessing in disguise yes. because it helped me deal with, deal with, with everything that. else. Yeah, with everything else. But you mentioned as well that in conversation earlier that you were misdiagnosed at some point. Yes, the what what had happened with the sexual assault was that I had what we term as a mental or nervous breakdown, and that really is when you, as an individual, cannot cope with everything that is happening in your life. You know, life presents you a challenge and all of a sudden, you know, this brain box, you know, goes boom. It's like a computer. Mm. If you give it too much information, it, it explodes. Right. So that is really what happened. And because I had a manic episode, now, now when I say manic is it's when you're, when mentally you are going a bit higher than what you're supposed yes. to. And, and, and so you're, I had a manic episode and they um, then diagnosed it as, as, as bipolar. Um, last year when, when I did have one, um, have another mental 
you know, breakdown, it came out that, you know, when they looked at the last 14, 15 years, you know, the psychiatrist said, but maybe it was a misdiagnosis. Oh my goodness. Because you had the sexual assault and as a normal person, any person being sexually assaulted or, or having sex without their consent, of course you're not able to cope with it and mentally it will challenge you of course and how has that affected your dealing with a the fact that you were diagnosed with hiv um i was placed on lithium which is you you placed on to regulate um uh, someone who is you know bipolar okay. it's one of the many medication forms and so when i was diagnosed hiv positive I, I lived that life secretly for two years, given the fact that I was living in a house of medical people. My mm. mother was a nurse, my brother's a male sister, so it was challenging. So I did have, after two years of diagnosis, have another mental breakdown. But it was challenging in the fact that, yeah, I was presented with something, again, which I self-stigmatized. Mm. I attack, you, when you have all of these labels, you need to make sense of it for yourself before you can even let anybody else know. For sure. That is so important, that is so vital. And it's something I've come to learn on my journey. And how did you eventually overcome the depression? Depression, um, and, and I, I like these terms, you know, people <laughs> throw it around, depression, <laughs> they throw around anxiety, they throw it around <laughs> mental health. The thing is, what are those things? Mm. Depression to me is a lack of interest in absolutely anything. That would be eating, going to work, um, waking up in the morning. And, and so for me, um, the good thing was that I was at Lentecare Psychiatric Hospital and they, they gave me the tools to overcome those things. Mm. And, and really, to overcome depression, you need to find a way of getting interest in things again. Mm. You know. Um, there, there's many things that I can can turn to, you know. One of that being my spirituality. Um, you know, for some spirituality won't work. Um, you know, going out for a morning walk. Um, you know, um, walking every morning. Yeah, that's a way of, of giving your mind something else to focus on, mm. and that is the important thing with with depression, is that you need to fo take your mind off that and focus on something else. And, and maybe when you're that depressed, you know, uh, you just got your HIV diagnosis, um, you, you may not find that something, mm. but that is where your family and your friends ask for help. In. You need to ask for help. Yeah. That is where your health professional comes in. That's where your pre and your post counseling mm. really does come in. So you also promote disclosure then, I'm sure. I, I promote disclosure. Mm only after very careful thought. Mm. You need to look at the consequences of you disclosing your status. Disclosure is good, but are you as a person, have you accepted yourself? Quite. Have you accepted the fact that now there's another label, I'm HIV positive. Have you accepted that label? Because if you can stand up in the mirror and say, I got in, son, I'm HIV positive, and so what? So what? <laughs> Once you are able to do that, by all means, mm. if you want to go to the mountaintops and shout it out, do that. But I say always, and I always advise people that come to me, I say, disclosure is a daily thing. Mm. It's a step-by-step -step process. Whether you tell one person, or whether you tell two people on a day, it's a daily process mm. that you need to go through. Because with disclosure comes the fear of rejection, and it comes that all important. skills coping. you know it comes with a whole lot of skills <laughs> it comes with that acceptance mm. you need to know that you're either going to be accepted or you're going to be rejected Pick one. and you need to respect the other person's opinion basically opinion and their choice yeah. really you yeah. need to for sure for sure and having said that i think we're going to take a short ad break and we'll be back to you soon um dorian has got so much to share with us we'll be back
Welcome back. You are watching Balance and Bounce on Open Studio. I am Cindy Pavasic and speaking to Dorian Basson on mental health. Dorian, uh, we were talking about mental health and how you would respond. Now, going back, say, 10 years, speaking to yourself now, what would you tell yourself? I would tell myself that it was going to be okay. I think, Cindy, you know, if I think way back when, 13 years when I was diagnosed, there was a, there was a term which was, was going around, you know, and you heard all of the big people speak about it when <laughs> you grew up, the groot sikta. And here, all of a sudden, this academic, uh, academic scholar has that groot sikta. And I would just like to tell that that person, it is going to be okay. Mm. Well, I'm, I think back that, you know what, also if I'd known what I know now, I would definitely have disclosed my status earlier. Because do you think that not disclosing, we, we chatted about this mm, just now, yes. but again, do you think Secrets make you sick. Secrets make you sick. Secrets lead to the uh, secrets. Secrets lead to depression. Secrets lead to mental nervous breakdown. Our brain box, our mind, can only occupy so much. And when you are dealing with work, or you're dealing with school, or you're dealing with university, or you're dealing with life at mm. at, at at the norm, you know. Your, your, your mind takes in information every day and it needs to process that information in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, you know, it goes to a certain um, sector of the brain. And, and here all of a sudden you have this little dark spot which is not sitting where it's supposed to be sitting. Mm -hmm. It's going to mess with your emotions. It's going to mess with your thought patterns and it is going to eventually mess with your physical being and your physical well-being so so keeping a secret is is one thing if you if you know why you're keeping it yes but all secrets eventually need to come out and when yours did come out who was there to support you well <laughs> this is a this, this is the emotional one for me because my late mother dorothy Besson, um and my late sister sharon Nenderboom, they've been my anchor and and you know um my brother michael and and his wife Frejanik, and you know i have so many people that have supported me um you know and that i've met on this journey and and so i cannot remember one person that walked away mm. i cannot remember one person that have that has actually walked away um from me because of my hiv and if they did i want to say to them today Cheers. check this out <laughs> you know um nothing has changed mm. nothing about me who i am nothing has changed that's fantastic and do you think that disclosing was it a one-on-one -on -one? did you go public how did you how did you actually disclose when you initially disclosed i i'd initially you know i had you know another mental breakdown and psychiatrist called in my my mom and my sister and you know they actually were there to assist me in disclosing but um just fast forward you know to 2016 i i had in my efforts to to try and overcome my depression and overcome my my poor mental state i i found um meaning in helping others and i mm. formed an organization called the red driven foundation which is still active today and i created a platform where an hiv positive individual would tell their story because i don't think there's enough platforms mm. where we are celebrated mm. that is the difference there's enough platforms for us to tell our stories but yes. there's not enough um platforms where we are celebrated as individuals and fahmira miller was the inspiration for that specific event that i right. created and in 2016 i stood up at my it was a few days before my 10th um, anniversary and i publicly told my story 
and and I remember how you know you know you burst out in tears mm. you know you emotion what that story comes emotions and and so when I'm when you are feeling low allow yourself to feel mm. low but don't allow yourself to stay low right. that is the difference was there any feeling of relief when you disclosed your status it was major <laughs> you know that phew, I just had a good massage <laughs> that feeling um, disclosure is never easy mm. with, the, with disclosure comes you know I call it the double D disclosure equals depression but you have the power to change it around right mm. yeah for sure how do you feel when it comes to untreated HIV do you think people don't go and 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 test because they don't want to know their status and what do you think uh, what sort of impact has that anxiety of s suspecting that they are HIV positive but not wanting to go for the test now, now Sanjay that's a very good question especially in in, in the the country that and the city that we live in uh, what I found in my HIV AIDS work is that a lot of people in, in black um, communities, they are afraid of testing. And I've always wanted to know, what Why? is it? What <laughs> is it that, that you are so afraid of? And it is that culture which, and I'm not going to just single out the black right. community. I'm not going to say right across the board. It is that culture we are brought up in, you know, especially the males. You as a male, you are the provider. Mm. You are not meant to be sick. You're not meant to be, you know, taking tablets because yes. you are brought up in that masculine, um, you know, um, environment. Like environment, if I could call it mm. that. And so um, it is that ignorance which still is a huge block for us in the sure. HIV AIDS field. And the last message that you'd like to leave with the people watching love beyond HIV and AIDS you know that 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 that, that, that. <laughs> if, if you follow me on on Facebook or Instagram you'll see it love beyond HIV and AIDS because that is how I overcame not just mentally physically but that is how I overcame um, this thing we, 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 we are so afraid of go and get yourself tested well there we have it it's I mean really Thank you very much to Dorian for being so vulnerable um, here to disclose his um, status yet again, because it, like he says, it's an everyday thing. And always remember, HIV and AIDS is not a shame. And I thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you again. I have got so much information for you. You are watching Cindy Pavasic on Open Studio and have a good day.